It's also important to remember that science is a human endeavor and that part of understanding what is um, goes through a, a very rigorous methodology so that, so that when a particular discovery is discovered, um, it's not enough that one person said, oh, look what I found. There have to be innumerable others that find the same thing. And then once enough people have found the same thing, there is, is some confidence then that this is a scientific finding or as we like to say, a scientific fact. And what gives that such weight is not that, that you know, scientists, the persons found it, but that the method they use uh, instills a level of confidence that gives the rest of us uh, an ability to trust that. So, I mean, the places where we see that most obviously are in areas of medicine, um, where you know, the drugs that we put into our mouths, the things we let doctors do to us, we do with a, very, a fairly uh, strong level of confidence, even though obviously it's not perfect. And we do this because there's been trials, there's been, you know, again, corroborating evidence that shows this is the case. And by using, I think, those analogies, it, you can help uh, Christians who struggle with, with evolution to perhaps relax a little bit because the thing that makes evolution so strong is not that, you know, a few evolutionary biologists have found some things, but that uh, biology, paleontology, chemistry, cosmology, anthropology, I mean, cross disciplines, there has been, medicine, there has been uh, a recognition of the robustness of this theory that has made it dependable enough that all sorts of other research have come off of it. So it's, it's, it's as close to a scientific fact as we can have in, in theoretical biology, and thus to dismiss it is is, is it's just irresponsible without, you know, I think taking a good hard look at that, that sort of evidence.